This is Michel Becquerel on the Spro Pivot Frog. So that's the first one of those I've caught with that. I've actually had a hard time keeping it from getting it hung up in uh, heavy cover, but any kind of open water or close to the shore, it's really good. Uh, but guys, here's some footage from a recent trip I took to the eastern shore of Maryland. Um, got a lot of small ponds and bodies of water over there, kind of like in Delaware. And uh, the the name of the lake is called Smithville Lake. And definitely a definitely a cool place, cool place to go paddle and uh, you know go punch some some mats and flip mats um, using a seven foot eleven Shimano Crucial punch rod. And uh, this thing it ain't light, <laughs> but man, it's heavy. And and some of these hook sets, you know, I I don't really nail into the fish, but because there's so much backbone in this this rod, you know, it did it just sets the hook and. Uh, um, I, I like using it for these uh, these types of situations. I mean, because that's really what it's made for. So use uh, use the right tool for the job, I guess. Um, so how I'll uh, kind of work these mats is, you know, I'll I'll kind of pick my point of entry and then uh, I'll fish that before before entering the mats, and then I I just go all in and kind of fish amongst the mats, become one with the mats, if you will. Uh, but in this, uh, I've also got my propel drive down, and that thing can get kind of mucked up in in grass and weeds. So uh, uh, the heavier the cover, I'll, I'll just lift it up out of the water and throw down my stakeout pole, uh, which really, really comes in handy in these types of situations uh, because I just use it as a quick anchor, just stick it in the ground, and uh, hold my position especially during wind uh, not a lot of wind on this day so didn't really have that problem um, here's what I was talking about with a, a light hook set to where I'm just like uh, is that a fish uh, you know yeah, not, not too great of a hook set but hey we got uh, got this pickerel in and the little, little sucker actually cuts my my 50 pound braid uh, and gets off in the boat and then makes all kinds of racket but uh, was able to, to get him out of there and uh, jump drop them back in the water but so you know if you're looking at, at fish and match you know, don't be afraid to to go all up in them and get all up in that stuff and 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 fish them hard So one of the main selling points of the Slayer Propel 13 is the fact that you can go in reverse. Now from now on I'm just going to note these as Slayer Propel fishes because there was no way I could have positioned myself, kept the rod in my hand, felt and saw the, the line moving, gotten back enough to where I could set this hook without my Slayer Propel. So this was the, the kayak put this fish in the boat. So here I spent all this time, you know, fishing these pads, trying to find bass, and the whole time they were in the trees. Had I thought to be fishing in the trees, that's where I would have found them. Huh. So, next time you're out, make sure you uh, throw something up in the trees and uh, catch some bass. So here I'm just really dragging a uh, a weightless Texas rig worm over the pads. That seemed to be a really good presentation for for first searching the pads to to see where fish might be located, and then trying to hook up with them. Uh, but on on this day, I, I one had a lot of problems with that darn net. Uh, every time I tried to use that net. Uh, it was hung up on something, a clip, or I couldn't get it. 
I just couldn't use it all day long each time and you know or or the fish would get off before I grabbed it so I had uh, a ton of hookups uh, that I lost um, I, I definitely lost more than I caught which uh, would have been nice because that that was a decent sized bass that had gotten off previously and uh, I took a I took a lot of my my losses out but I put them up there at the beginning so you kind of kind of saw the ones that I that I had lost um, in, in in this segment coming up uh, this is going to be where I catch my uh, personal best pickerel uh, not something I'm really chasing after but hey I'll take it you know 25 inches and in, in one quarter is a is a decent pickerel so I set the set the hook on this feisty little devil and, and pull him out and he's not happy uh, so you know didn't 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 retie after this and uh, immediately go in and, and throw to the area up here and to my right because I'd I'd gotten a few strikes over there and, and missed a few uh, earlier again I, I missed more than I caught So after that pickerel cut that 17 pound fluorocarbon, I, I switched uh, rods and reels from my punching punching rod because after wielding that tire iron all day long, I was a little tired uh, in in the shoulder. So put the 50 pound braid on my carbon light and threw that, and that's when I hooked into the big boy. Ah, more net problems. I seem to recall saying something about that. I was also using an experimental uh, D-bomb color. This is the Desert Storm uh, Missile Baits Baby D-bomb, and uh, yeah, both the bass and and the pickerel seemed to like it. Caught the uh, the last four fish in this video on uh, on that color. So, you know, if you're looking at at the D-bombs, it's it's a good color. It'll work. So here's a little tidbit of what I was trying to do. I was trying to land the bait on a pad and then slowly drag it off uh, to give a nice subtle entry into the water. The bass seemed to respond well to that and kind of like the the weightless worm it was just dragging across the top. It's not making a lot of noise but they're catching and sensing on that vibration and, and they seem like I said they seem to respond well to that and probably spooked them less and got me more hookups. Just want to say thank you for all my subscribers, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Share this, and have a go. Oh man, that looks like it sucks.